Hi, my name is Kevin Schusler with Command Light. Uh, today we're going to go over basically the uh, the auto park sequence of a night light. Also, the uh, two um, variables that can stop an auto park sequence. Uh, those are being a lot a loss of center below safety limit, and also the backlights not being flushed up with the other two. Either of those, once you get down to the preset safety limit, will stop the auto park sequence. So I'll just uh, start with here. We'll go ahead and raise this one up. This is a, the KL450A-LF. Lower stage will raise. Uh, again, the safety limit is off of a mercury switch in the arm here. Once it gets above that, uh, you'll be allowed to rotate, and also your lamps will come on. Down below that, uh, you will not have lamps or rotation. So that's all adjusted off that internal mercury switch. So we'll go ahead and raise this up and I'll just show you a normal uh, auto park sequence. Backlights pan away. Okay, first thing it will do during an auto park sequence, we'll find center at the same time the backlights are panning, uh, looking for their, uh, their home switch. This is all a hit it and forget it on a night or a command light, one button. Uh, again, you'll have your emergency stop and your auto park button there. Once it finds its, uh, its nest switch down, uh, you'll still have your green centered light and your red elevated warning will go off. So that was a, a proper auto park sequence for a light tower. That's the way uh, both the night and the command light should go. The two things that will throw that off would be below safety limit if it loses this home switch on the, the backlight. There's a couple of uh, little buttons up here that as the backlight pans, it will alternately hit them. Uh, come down to this one, it'll hit that, reverses polarity to the motor, and then uh, just sends it back the other way. So in auto park, it will look for this one and then the center as well. Center on the night light is down here below uh, this. There's a little cherry switch down here. Uh, again, there's a rotation uh, disc under here, which is the bottom of the spindle. Uh, as this rotates around, uh, the little cam here will hit this switch. And as it hits this switch, uh, your green center light. So if either of those are lost uh, below that safety limit, that's the end of auto park. Uh, you'll need to do some adjustment on it. Um, to adjust center on this one, basically what you'll do, um, and I'll go ahead and uh, rotate this around just a little bit here. Again, the switch is activated. So uh, what you'll want to do is go ahead and auto park your tower the first time. If you don't get this green light, it just keeps spinning. It's not contacting the switch. Um, what you do is you will bring the switch back closer to the cam. So it's pushing the little roller in on it. Uh, if it's coming down right or left, it's kind of weird because it's uh, upside down. Uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to move the cam in the direction that it's off. So if I'm off to this side, I'll want to tap the cam that way. If I'm off to my side, I'll want to move the cam this way. The best way to do that is to go ahead and put a couple of little marks on each side of the cam. And with all sensor adjustments, a little goes a long way. So uh, once you get that mark, then you know you're basically your starting period. Uh, there's one big Phillips head screw up here. Uh, I don't even usually loosen that. What I'll do is I will take just uh, some type of soft brass punch or something, or a screwdriver or nut driver, something like that. And what you want to do if I was off uh, that direction, what I'd do is I'd just tap that. And you can watch your guide marks and uh, do a very little bit. Then once you've, uh, once you've tapped that thing and moved it just a little bit, go ahead and auto park again. Another thing I always do too when I'm do, uh, setting uh, center on one of these, I'll go ahead and make me a reference mark. And what I want to do, I want to have this lamp tree about halfway between its two extremes. So uh, this would be uh, what we call a street light position on it. And then we've got the fully elevated. The uh, differences between this position and then that street light position does vary center just a little bit. So when I'm setting it, I will go ahead and always do that, split the difference. And usually once, uh, once that's set, 
at that midway point, uh, it, it's enough to accommodate either other directions. This one here I also like to make just a little indicator mark right here and then I can kind of base the corner of this block onto that point so I'm setting center from the exact same positioning of the lamp tree. So again, we'll rotate off. Go ahead and hit auto part. Picks up its center, activates the cam. Then it'll bring the lower stage down till it hits its down limit. And at this point here, I'll generally stop it if it wasn't on center. And then I'll just manually bring it down. And then you can kind of see where you're going to come out. That way, if it's way off or it still needs further adjustment, you're not going to uh, lock that tree in very bad. That one looked like it came down very good. So. That should be good to go then. Um, another thing that can affect this would be play in the belt. So if you've got a lot of sway back and forth on this lamp tree, what you want to do is go ahead and uh, tighten the belt up before you set that center. Uh, very simple, uh, I've already removed the screws, but they'll be the two half covers. And then the surround. This will give you access to your rotation motor. And on the rotation motor, there's three screws right up here that are in slots. Uh, that is um, how you would adjust that. So you do go ahead and you'd loosen these up. And then you, what you want to do is you want to tighten this. And I just usually go in here with a pry bar uh, off of the side of the motor and just pry that over. And then while I'm holding that as tight as I can, I kind of give this a little bit of play to make sure I don't have a, a big loop in the belt there, and then go ahead and crank your screws down nice and tight. And that'll take your slop out. If you have enough slop in the belt, you'll never get center to set right. But anyway, that's, that's how you do that. Again, I have very little play in that, so that belt's nice and tight. There's no actual deflection uh, radius that you need on that belt. Just good and as tight as you can get it is nice. Uh, the reason I put a block or something in there too, uh, this is all aluminum, so if you get in there and really re-ank on that with that pry bar without something to kind of uh, spread that torque out a little bit, you'll actually bend this a little bit. Then you, again, you'd go ahead and go ahead and adjust all of the air, set your sensors and everything, and then um, then you can go ahead and put all the covers back on. The other thing that will stop this during auto park would be losing that backlight home. I'll go ahead and fake this one out once. Again, I've rotated that manually off. Auto park shuts down. So it looks for all intents and purposes like it would work, uh, but I've lost that backlight home. Um, a quick way to check this and be careful because once you reacquire that backlight home switch, it will try and continue its auto park sequence. So if you just go up, Rotate those back on to contact that switch. It will continue its auto park. Another thing you can do. Take it back, back up above that safety limit and let it reacquire. Uh, to adjust that. Again, on this one here, uh, it's a, here's the, your rotation motor. Uh, there's a little belt and a, another pulley up here on the backlight switch. You just remove these three screws holding the cover on. And that will go ahead and expose your backlight. Uh, to do, tighten these, uh, again, there's three bolts, uh, just a 7 16 wrench. Uh, loosen those up a little bit. Again, just put your pry bar right in here. Pry those down while you're holding the tension on. Go ahead and tighten that up. Again, no deflection in that belt. Nice and tight right there. So, if you're still not picking it up after you've uh, made sure that belt's tight, uh, there's a set screw on the back of this little paddle that goes between the two switches. You can loosen that up and just adjust that paddle up a little bit more. And what you want to do is watch those two right there so that they're nice and flush with the other uh, two there. 
The reason we do that is if these were pan clear down during an auto park sequence, um, it could come down and actually break these off onto the, the main electrical box. So that, everything's adjusted now. Uh, again, set it at about that halfway point. We go ahead and pan this back. You can see that backlight assembly working. We go ahead and take that a little bit further so you can watch that cycle back before it gets to center. Okay, then we'll go ahead and hit auto park again. At any point during auto park, emergency stop, we'll shut this down and all you have to do to reacquire is just hit the button again. Again, it's picked up at center, back lights are flush. Comes down, activates its nest switch, shuts it off, you lose the green elevated warning light. So that's how you would uh, adjust center or your backlight to keep your auto park sequence going. Those are really the only two things that will shut the auto park sequence down uh, during that. So it's, it's always one of those. If you don't have the backlight, then it's always be your center. And the best way to tell that is to just keep your eye on this. If it flickers or goes out, you've lost center and uh, that, will, that will prevent it from coming down either manually or in an auto park sequence. Thank you.